Oh, look out. Oh, look at this, guys. This is new, man. We've got this papyrus, and now we've got some of these. This is awesome. Here's proof that we have serpents. Uh-oh. Oh, no, man. We got something sick. Oh, no. This guy's dead. We got to meet some turtles if we're going in the pond. It is the Mexican musk turtle. So I'm going to jump in. We're going to go underwater. Here we go. See ya. Hey, what's going on everyone? Ken in here, really excited because the weather is awesome and it's time for us to get back in the pond. Uh, the temps are great. We haven't done much around the pond, the big recreation pond that Aquascape put in here just about two and a half years ago now. This place has grown so much, man. I thought it would be really fun to just get back in the pond and see how much life has kind of taken place and just overtaken my backyard. We've got banana plants, we've got alocasia, we've got uh, canna lilies, we've got all kinds of different uh, elephant ears growing in here. Of course, the papyrus. This is the wetland. It is what is cleaning the pond water. We're gonna get in the water, we're gonna check on the cichlids, but first I kinda wanted to wander around kind of the landscaping area just adjacent to the pond, just right off the pond. I've created kind of a riparian uh, habitat for some of my animals, and what's really cool, is we have these cages, and you remember this one. Uh, here is Crazy Sophia. Oh yeah, there she is. This girl is a lunatic. Uh, Sophia, my stepdaughter, named this one, and it's gonna bite you guys for sure. Oh, look out. Oh, they are so crazy. And then here is uh, Crazy Leo, who's not so crazy anymore. But these guys just kind of hanging out here, really digging these guys. They're growing up nicely, although they are not really tame at the moment but uh he is but look at how beautiful these rhinos are such cool lizards so right now they're in this and eventually they'll get moved to a larger habitat but i like the fact that these boys and girls right here are just kind of hanging out right off the pond check it out here's the pond from the backside. all kinds of ferns have taken over look at this the ferns just grow out of the cage i love it man we also have our carnivorous plant bog right here. Looks like I gotta do a little bit of weeding. No big deal, you just pull some of the weeds right out. But this is awesome, man. So this is really growing nicely. These are pitcher plants. And what happens is they attract flies, like you see right there. They attract mosquitoes and they'll get caught. They'll go down to drink some nectar and then they get caught way down in those stems and they get digested. So that's how the plants actually get their food. They're carnivorous plants, much like a Venus flytrap. And right now, we even have some really cool flowers happening from these guys. So it's a really cool bog. We put peat moss in here years ago um, and it's very moist because the pond is actually below us. If I were to step on that, it's possible I could just kind of fall right through. Uh, everything has grown up nicely. And look at all the fish. They follow me wherever I go. We have more snakes, thankfully, after Slinky eating my favorite water snake. That was total bummer. Um, I'm not going to be letting Slinky walk around here uh, to eat anymore. I don't want to have any other incidents like that. But I did see some brown water snakes that were living here and they are doing well. So I'm very excited about that. So I just want to kind of walk you around and show off some of the landscaping. Some, uh, these are Hawaiian blue alocasia. They're really pretty. Oh, look at this, guys. This is new, man. I didn't even notice this. Check this out. This is sawgrass. This is what you'd find in the Everglades. It has just taken root. Look at these, these cattails. It has actually taken root here. Look, where is it rooted to? This is amazing. Look at this. It's rooted right into the water. Unreal, there's a log here. We've got this papyrus and now we've got some of these. That's what's really fun about these ecosystems. Uh, these ecosystem ponds. You know, if you got some native plants, they're just gonna find their way here. All of this is just, it's just incredible, man. Of course, right now it's real hot, so the redfoots are kind of hanging out. They're actually not uh, out and about. They will be in a little while once the sun goes down a little further. But I love the fact that the fishtails are growing. We're creating a canopy. Eventually, these guys are gonna get moved and there'll be animals that will not necessarily be uh, full sun living here. Uh, but let's go check this out the backside of our wetland filter. 
our bog, as you will. We got nice algae in here, and look at this. This is awesome. Here's proof that we have serpents back. Snakes are back, people. Slinky is not gonna get these guys. So we do have some shed. So there are snakes in the pond, very cool. Probably the brown water snake. Awesome stuff, man. And all this algae, I get in here and I'll thin it out. But if we look in the algae, you'll see, you'll find little organisms like shells and snails rather. Little snails, see that? How cool is that, everyone? So we've got, sh we've got snails, uh, we've got all kinds of little microorganisms. And as I pull it out, okay, I'm gonna pull this stuff out. Believe it or not, it's not hurting anything. It's actually helping. We got more papyrus growing, but I'll get in here with a really cool product that Aquascape gave me. I'll show you that in a moment. But right now, I wanna pull this. And some of you were asking what happened to my finger. Uh, if you look on my Instagram page, you'll see I almost cut my finger off, man, with a box cutter. So be careful with box cutters. It's almost healed though. I just put this little, little latex glove tip on the end there and that's been helping me out. But look at all these snails. All these little snails are food. I can grab these snails, I pick them up, and then I wind up throwing them in the other ponds, and I throw them in for some of my young turtles, which love snails, and it's a really great uh, food source for them. So we've got that, I'm really excited. But yeah, I'll get in here, and I'll just clean off some of these rocks, but then I just cruise over to my big pond, and look, everyone hears my voice. Here are some big turtles, some Heosemis grandis. Oh, and I chuck it right in there. And then those guys eat the algae. So whenever I trim these leaves and trim back all these plants, I just chuck them right in there. And all these turtles are eating everything. And you'll notice, guys, look at how low the pond is here. Let's go check this out. I want to show you what's going on. So right now, we are in the dry season. It has not rained significantly in a few months. We've had a drizzle, but we have not had any substantial rain. So look what happens to my pond. It really starts to get low. And then right here, you know, we've got all kinds of stuff going on. We've got turtles, we've got everything happening, man. It's nuts. Uh-oh. Oh no, man, we got something sad. Oh no, this guy's dead. Oh man, that sucks. Oh man, that's no good. This guy's not, this guy died. Wow. Man, that's a bummer. Not long either. Wow. I wonder what happened. Look at this, guys. This is sad. And even though, oh, I just broke my sandal too. Even though, um, man, what a bummer, huh? But I show you guys everything. And this is what happens. Animals will die. This is an old animal. This is an old grandis, and these are turtles that are usually just bulletproof, but I don't really know how old this animal was. I know it was an adult when I got it. It was taken out of the wild. Um, it was taken out of the food market. All these, all these Heosemis grandis were out of the food markets in Asia. So this guy got to live here, but it just looks like he just got old. You can see sunken in here. Uh, maybe he wasn't eating, maybe he was sick. And this situation in this pond right now, and has always been a community pond. It's also kind of a pond where, had I noticed this guy was sick, I would have been able to pull him out, but I didn't notice until I was just walking over there right now. And I, I'm just kind of bummed. It's always sad to see death, but it's a fact of life, guys, when you're dealing with these animals. And so all these turtles, um, it's kind of a situation where I feed them. If I notice that they're sick, of course I'll pull them out. Uh, kind of bummed on this too. Uh, these uh, these are not very good sandals, so they're dead. Wow, what a bummer. So this video got a little bit of a bummer in it, but at least I know I gave this animal a good life for many, many years. And um, he's one of perhaps 50 that I've got inside here, uh, inside this pond. So I'm glad I noticed that I'll pull him out. And after the video, guys, I'll probably just bury him. Um, and so that's what happens, man. What a bummer. Big, beautiful Heosemis grandis, man. Gosh, you can see he was, we had some notches there to identify him when I got him from the TSA. And you can see even this water, he's a water turtle, but he's got this concaved plaster on because they do wander about on land quite often. All right, man. All right, guys, we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna try and get happy again. 
I'm sorry that that guy died. I'm sorry I had to share that with you, but I always share you with, I mean, we just find things as they happen. Today was, that was the first time today I kind of wandered out here to see what was going on. And he wasn't there yesterday. So I don't know, but here we go. All right, man. Just really, really low in the pond here. And here come more of the grandest. So that pond, believe it or not, is still pretty deep. It's still about waist high out there in the middle. And in a few weeks, we're gonna start getting a lot of rain here. So it'll fill up really, really quickly. So let's get back up. Now that we've seen kind of what's going on around the old Camp Kennan, around the ponds, okay? I wanted to visit in and just see, there's Colin. Colin's back outside, everyone. Our good friend, Colin. He is now here. What's up, buddy? I think he's getting ready to shed. He's nice and quiet. Hey, bud. Hey, buddy. Are you in a good mood today? Say hello to everyone. There he is. There's Carl. Good man. You're going to strike the camera? I hope not. It's just a camera. Try not to hit anybody. Oh, my gosh. He's a beautiful coastal carpet python. These guys are from Australia. I put his hide down on the ground. He's got all this area. We've got clean water in there coming out all the time for him. I like this cage kind of hidden away um, it's kind of hidden away and it'll get nice canopy over it uh, around the backside of our of our little wetland filter recreation pond all right so what do you say we move on to the next phase of the video we're gonna keep moving and um, I'm just gonna again look here's the stream we've got algae in the stream that helps filter it out but I mentioned earlier that's what I wanted to do I wanted to show you uh, really cool product that has made my life so easy. Um, it is this from my friends at Aquascape. I think they're calling it, I, I don't know exactly what they're calling it. I think it's the Pond Shark uh, net. And it really makes things easy for me to clean up some of this algae. You can see I just scoop it right out. And it's got these really cool, this rake type situation. And I'm able to just kind of pull it on out. And I can bring it on over and throw it into the other pond for those guys to eat, which is pretty cool. But what I'll do is I'm gonna just dump it over the fence so we can get to the next more exciting part of the video when I introduce you to one of the turtles we're gonna to meet today. Because we gotta meet some turtles if we're going in the pond. And I'm really excited to swim with this particular turtle because he's uh, very spunky and they're interesting. Um, you wouldn't think they're good swimmers, but they actually can be pretty good swimmers. So we're gonna get in and we're gonna show you who I've got right here. And before I let him go, I'm actually gonna switch cameras, but it is the Mexican musk turtle, Stereotypus salvani. Beautiful species, not like the giant Mexican musks, a uh, little bit smaller than those, but a really cool and funky turtle. Uh, I think it'll be really awesome for us to get in the water. Look at those really webbed feet that he's got. So I wanna get in there with him and follow him around so he doesn't disappear on me because this guy probably can fit into some places that I uh, won't see him in. So I'm gonna jump in. We're gonna start up the other camera. We're gonna go underwater. We're gonna hang out with the Mexican musk turtle. And uh, we're also gonna see some beautiful cichlid fish. And you're gonna see just how well these guys have actually grown and adapted. There's the koi. All right, that's Cecil the koi. Our lilies are coming back. It's getting warm again. I fertilized, so we got some new lilies coming up. So it's just gonna be amazing. This water is cold. I ain't gonna lie to you people. Water is cold. I'm not happy about that. So uh, give me a second to adjust. Here we go. Woo! Yeah! Holy! Oh my goodness. Yeah, that'll wake you up. All right, anyway, it's uh, late afternoon, but um, Let's go ahead. You know what I do. I won't spin on camera. Some of you don't think it works, but it actually does. I think it does. I need to get some anti-fog, but eh, who cares? All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh. Okay. So let's get this one ready. Ready to go. And then I'm gonna just reach in and grab our little buddy, Mexican musk turtle, who is just off camera right now. Uh, oh, actually, you know what I'll do? 
I'll let him just crawl on out. Here we go. We're going to follow him under. See ya. Oh, he's awesome. I love these swimming with videos, and this is exactly why I wanted this Aquascape Ecosystem Recreation Pond in my backyard, so I can give you guys a better understanding of these animals in a more naturalistic environment. And similar to a snapping turtle, this guy will dive right to the bottom, and he just kind of walks along it. Now don't be fooled, because musk turtles are actually pretty good swimmers. Most of the time, however, they do like to walk around and climb over the things that may lie on the bottom of a pond or stream. And as you can see here, no problem climbing around. Now I've got to be careful because he's just small enough to fit into some of the crevices that these rocks make. So I definitely want to keep on guard and I don't want to lose this guy in the pond. It would take a long time before he showed himself to me again. Oh, no, you don't. Get over here, buddy. Okay. <laughs> this guy will make a quick getaway. But what I like about him also is he doesn't seem too bothered by me grabbing him and so on. Now it's over to underneath the patio deck. And you can see it's just cool. Very, very inquisitive little animal. Uses his nose. They can actually smell underwater. And they also have barbs underneath their chin, which help them sift through the soft mud to find any crustaceans. But I feel like I'm not the only one watching them. <laughs> the African cichlids are definitely interested in who's taking up residence in their pond. We can tell he's a male because you can see that long tail, very thick, and that shows that he is in fact a male. But you see, he just wants to kind of poke his head and everything. I really enjoy these guys and they're actually quite beautiful when you come to realize them. They have little nuances, the yellow underneath his neck, very beautiful, a very subtle beauty if you ask me. I love mud and musk turtles, and as I've grown older and have come in contact with more and more of them, they really are starting to become one of my favorite types of turtles to kind of watch underwater. Notice how cautious he is as he comes to the precipice of this cliff. Well, it's a long way down, dude. Easy does it. He decides, nah. I'm going to stay in the shallows and kind of continue to look along. I think he sees himself in the camera right here. Notice how long that neck is? Perfect for breathing while staying submerged. Uh-oh, where are you going, dude? Uh-oh. Yep, he went into a crevice. Oh boy, let's hope I can get him out. Now what they'll do is they'll hide in between rocks and they just basically take all four legs and stick them out and grip onto the rocks. This little dude is proving to be pretty strong. Oh, we got him out though. And look at how he just casually swims away. I love this animal's attitude. He is so chill. Now he's found some lilies to lose me in. Ha! Huh. Not so fast, little dude. I don't really have a name for this guy, but he's one of the many that I got from the Miami Zoo, and they all live in the front ponds. They're amazing. They seem to be more active at night, they can tolerate cooler temperatures, and many of them dig themselves into the dirt on land. They, in fact, do a lot of wandering on land. Here in Florida, we have the three-striped mud turtle. They sometimes call it the cow dung cooter.
because it can be found in cow pastures eating worms and flies off of cow poop. That's right, you heard it here first. Ah, and look at that long neck. What did I tell you about taking a breath while the rest of his body is submerged? For a larger musk turtle, he's still kind of small and he could wind up being prey very easily. So best to take your breaths kind of unnoticed. We're getting to a favorite part of the pond of mine. This is where the water spills out over the negative edge into the reservoir and gets pumped back up into the wetland. But you can see straight away, there's a lot of grasses here. I kind of like that. The grasses are really neat and it's gonna be cool to see him moving along the grass. It reminds me of when I was at the Rainbow River and I actually watched one of the native Florida species, the three-striped mud turtle, kind of walk along the eelgrass at the bottom. It was really, really cool. I'm hoping this guy will do the same thing. Kind of give me the feels, you know what I'm saying? Just to see these guys in a naturalistic environment. Gosh, it's so awesome. I wish I could just leave him in this pond. Unfortunately, he'd disappear and I don't have a containment around this barrier, around the pond rather, that keeps him in. So I'm afraid he would just wander off into one of the many other ponds we have here at Camp Kennan. But he's doing exactly what I wanted. Check it out, guys. Moving through that grass awesome i love the algae i love the grasses but most importantly i love seeing a turtle kind of wander his way through awesome uh, meanwhile i think these guys are very interested in what's going on we have had an explosion of african cichlids here at the camp these guys are really loving the aquascape pond. And it looks like our buddy the musk turtle is as well. Stereotypus salvini. This guy is the smaller of the two giant Mexican musk turtles. But I love him, man. So cool and so awesome to share this space with him. Many of these species can stay underwater for a really long time through cloacal breathing. They're actually able to diffuse oxygen right from the water through the capillaries in their cloaca, or their vent. This uh, enables the animal to stay underwater long periods of time. And in some cases, they, certain animals like the, the painted turtle, can stay underwater for six months while hibernating without taking an actual breath through its lungs, all diffusing oxygen through the capillaries in its mouth and cloaca. Pretty cool stuff, huh? The more the animal moves, though, the more he's going to need to breathe air. So that's why, if you notice, turtles, they tend to take their time underwater, nice and slow. We're now on the back side of the pond, and there's a big log up ahead, and if he gets in it, I'll never see him again. So I think we may cut this little video short here. I don't know. It's so awesome to watch him move around. I almost hate to pull him out. But at the end of the day, guys, all good things need to come to an end. And this video has been truly fantastic. Look at all those roots growing down from the plants on top of that log. Well, this is it, man. We're not going to keep them or let them disappear under there because who knows when I'd find them next if I ever did. So let's get them out. And uh, man, just an awesome afternoon spent with this really cool animal. What a fun. 
That was a really fun swimming with. I, I gotta tell you, I really loved seeing that guy, oh, this guy, <laughs> doing his thing under there. Um, a really relaxing kind of swim, to be perfectly honest. He's so curious. I love it. Uh, anyway, folks, I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, it's kind of a bummer that we did have a death today, but um, you know, we try the hardest we can for our animals. That's what this pond represents. And it's just a place that kind of animals can be themselves. That's why I love these aquascape ecosystem ponds is they mimic nature. And so at least the time that they're here at the camp, uh, they get to enjoy a naturalistic uh, existence. Um, so even though I'm kind of sad that that grand has passed away, at least we have another generation of exotic turtles that we're taking care of. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I thought it was really cool and relaxing. It was really cool to see what's going on with the pond and how it's maturing and how the pond goes through these different life cycles throughout the year. Even though we don't have a winter like you do to up north, there is still kind of a ebb and flow uh, with the seasons and the life of the pond. Anyway, folks, Mexican musk turtle, Mexican giant musk turtle, Stereotypus salvini, long neck, really beautiful species, and I really think they deserve a lot more credit because they have so much personality. Okay, we're gonna put him back in his front pod. I'll see you guys later.